everybody, it's Sam here. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. So I'm going to be showing you how to make this double lattice gatefold card. So this one has evolved after I made the lattice card uh, maybe a week ago, two weeks ago by the time this one goes up. And you'll see here you've got this beautiful lattice or plait or weave kind of uh, effect here on the left hand side and then you can open up the card you can see all of that in there as well and you don't have to put the ribbon through if you miss this video if you just click here that it will take you to that one if you like that style so i was playing around and i decided to basically see how it would work doing a double and after you see this you can relook at all of your cards that you've made in the past and if there's a fold you could add a lattice effect onto them so I think it's going to really transform some of the more simple cards even like an easel card anything that has a fold you can add this lattice detail and I really like this one so I've done a new template because this is a slightly different effect you'll see here you've got this longer section whereas on this one here it goes straight into kind of the um the crossover piece there whereas if I take that bit away you can see the crossover effect there so you've basically got this additional effect and it just came together really well. I made this during a Facebook Live and then I added some extra score lines so that now when you open this, it then pops out like this. And if I just bring it up, you've got that lovely heat embossed sentiment and stamp. I'll show you everything I've used. I've used these little gems all the way down the sides there and also just a few on that just to say. And then on the back, I've just got hello. So it's just to say hello and then you've got room to write your message. You can do all sorts of this, you could fold it that way if you wanted to and then have it open like this so it's displayed that way. You can have it, obviously this is how I'm going to have this one so you really get to appreciate all of that lovely detail and I said imagine if the sunlight kind of comes through that if it's on someone's windowsill. I just think it's going to create a lovely pattern and I think it's really unexpected for the person when they open it. So don't be you know, um, worried with this one, I've broken it down and once you've got your templates it's really easy to do so let me show you how. Okay, so I've gone ahead and done all of my stamping and I've coloured and everything because I just really want to focus the video on the template and then what I would advise you to do is photocopy it. If you've got any of your software, like your Cricut, your Brother Scan and Cut, then you can design it in there and then you could just keep it saved and print it out. It's entirely up to you. But for anybody who, you know, doesn't have a photocopier, doesn't have the technology or maybe know how to do it, because I'm not that great to be honest, I like a good piece of paper and pencil. This is what you're going to make, so you want two of them, so you may have to draw two if you, you, know, you can't photocopy them, but they are photocopies, but I'm going to make one with you now, so we'll remove the scoreboard because I don't actually need that for the minute. So you want to cut yourself a piece of 2 by 7 I'll get rid of that one so it's not confusing. Okay, so a piece of 2 by 7 get yourself a ruler and a nice sharp pencil. Okay, what we do first of all is we want to pop your ruler along the top here, and you'll see it's 2 inches. You're going to mark at half an inch, one inch, and one and a half. Okay, and then you're going to do the same along the bottom. So you're going to mark at half an inch, one inch, and one and a half. You then want to join those lines up. Now you do want to make sure that you, it's why it's good to have a sharp pencil, because you want to get those lined up perfectly. If you're going to be, if you're slightly off, it might affect the overall finish of the card, because some of your cuts might be a bit wonky so okay then you're going to pop it along this side lie your ruler along the top and you're going to mark it every well first of all actually if you put a little marker at half an inch and at six and a half in between the half inch and the six and a half you want to mark it every quarter of an inch so I'm just going along there just marking every quarter of an inch and I'll take a photo of this and I'll pop it on my blog so you can see it close up and, um, and print it off yourself if you want to. Okay, so every quarter of an inch. We then come down to the first line. And actually what it would be good to do, which is what I've done during the live, is mark it half an inch and six and a half along this side as well and just join up those half inch markers. You can scribble this bit out. This is basically going to be the piece you fold over the top of the card and the bottom just to hold it all in place. So just kind of mark those bits off because you don't need to worry about that area. Then come down onto that first line and again you want to mark it every quarter of an inch and you're going to join up those two quarter inch markers so you create these lines. So again make sure you get them spot on. Okay, 
So quarter of an inch markers on the outer side, quarter inch markers on the first line, and then on the next two lines you're going to mark it every half inch. Again I'm just going to lay the ruler down there and I'm just going to mark at half an inch and then bring it down and again along that one at every half an inch. Okay so I'll just bring it up a bit closer there. So along here you've got every quarter of an inch, this first line every quarter of an inch, this one every half an inch and this one every half an inch. Then what you want to do, so I'm going to start from the bottom, is you're going to join up like so. Now I'm wondering, well you can go along and do all those lines if you want, but what I'm going to do is actually start, you start from this very bottom one here actually, you pretend this is the same as this. You're going to come across here to the second score line, which is going to be your longest lines. Okay, so I've just come from the very bottom of this section here up to that line. Then this one you're going to go up to the first line. So you'll see there I've got one short line and one long line. The next one's going to be a long line, then a short line, long line, short line. And you're just bringing up all your long lines will always meet on your second one here. All the short lines will always come to the, the second. So your long lines to the third line, your short lines to the second line. But again, you might want to just go along and do all of these first, so these are nice and straight, and then go from there. It's entirely up to you. During the live, I've done them separately, like one by one. So that one's going to be long, that one's going to be short, this one's going to be long, and then short, long, short. So if I just bring it up again. Okay, so the very bottom one here, from the first line, I'm going to go to the third line with the first marker. And then this one, you're going to the second line with the first marker. So you're just following where you've put all your points. So again, I'm just going to continue joining all these dots up. So it's like playing dot to dot. When you get to the last two, you're just going to join again whatever's next. So I've done my short ones, so the long line will just go and finish at the top of this line here, and then this one will finish at the top of that second line. Okay, and that is your template. So you'll need to do that twice, or you can now go and photocopy this, like I said, you know, scan it, or you're doing this, you know, on the on your computer. So I've already got my templates here. I marked one, two and three just for the photos. So that's line one, line two, line three. Um, again, if you want to go back and watch that live, I will link it in the description box below. So now we've got our templates, we can prepare our card. So I've got this lovely yellow colour. I'm actually going to do the same card that I did during the live because I had pretty much half of all the paper left. So. I wanted to get that used rather than put it into my scraps. So this is a piece of 12 by 6 and along the 12 inch side you want to score at 3 and at 9. Now I have also got these extra score lines but I think I'm going to show you how to add those in at the end but if you do want to make it exactly like I have here, so basically these extra score lines are these ones here. If you don't add those score lines then it will just be a nice gatefold and it will open up like that and that will be flat and it would be displayed you know with that edge flat and then the sides just open but if you want it to because the idea is you can put it in the envelope like that and then they just open it like this and that's adding these extra ones so I will do them actually but you don't have to so you can get two different styles if you add another score line at four and a half and at seven and a half then you'll have the same card as me okay so I'll just go over them again so you'll score at three Four and a half, seven and a half, and nine. Okay. Next, you just want to fold for the minute. I think it'd be easier just to fold. I'm going to go that way. The three and the nine score line. So, like so. Just make sure everything lines up nicely. Okay. So now we have our gate folds. You'll see that's just what you would have if you didn't add those two extra score lines. Now you want to grab your 
template and a couple of clips will be handy. I've just got these bulldog clips here. And you're going to run this left hand side along your card with the half inch folds folding over the top and the bottom. So I'm just going to fold that one over like so and then pop your clip in this section here because you're going to be cutting all within this. Make sure it's nice and taut and it lays perfectly over that card again with that edge running perfectly along the side there and then just fold that back over and then again pop your clip there. Next you want to get yourself a nice pair of sharp scissors where the, they've got a nice point on the end that's quite sharp on the end there that will mean that you can snip right to the very end without it kind of splitting the card apart. If I was to use for example these scissors here see they've got kind of a rounded end they would actually they wouldn't work with this project unless you cut all the time within this section here if you cut right up to the edge it would just break the card apart because it's too thick these are nice and thin these are the Tim Holtz tonic studio um, scissors these are the seven inch ones again if I can find them I'll link them below next you want to start from that very first line which is the longest line and you're going to cut it if you can do it in one kind of cut that would be good and you're going to cut it right up to the end of the pencil there okay then this one you're going to cut across and then up to the first line so you're just following your pencil mark and then again cut across and again try and do it in one cut each time and I'm just cutting to each of those lines if your pencil goes over the line try and cut to the line because then they're all the same so I'm cutting you know you've got these three lines here that's where I'm kind of cutting to so I'm snipping there and then across to there and then there across to there so just do that all the way along and also on this side but I, I, I'll stop after this one and just talk you through the next side just to make sure you get the template on the right side Now when you get to the second to last cut here, you're actually going to remove this whole corner but make sure you keep the card, okay? So keep that piece there, you can get rid of the paper, but keep this piece because you're going to use that again in a minute. So now we can remove this and you can throw that away. Get your second template, now this one you actually need to cut it from the back because Otherwise, if you just lay it down on here, or even turn it upside down, you're going to have a different finish, you see, or it's going to be um, exactly the same in terms of its direction, and you don't want that. So you actually want to keep it the same way, up the right way, but flip it over and lay it on your card, and just fold that one over. Again, pop that one in place, and then pull it nice and taut and fold it over and then just cut it exactly the same as you did this side. Now you'll have something that looks like this and you should have two pieces like this. Next open up the card and you want to flip it so that you have these arch pieces facing you. I'm going to start on one side first. Now what you want to do is you're going to miss the first section so you're going to go skip this one which is your shorter side or your shorter piece you want to go to the bigger ones and it's the bigger ones that you're going to fold back each time so I'm going to fold that one back on itself and if I just bring that up can you see how that's just folded back then you're going to miss the small one and again you're going to grab the larger one and fold it back and it should line up perfectly over that small one there can you see when I lay that down and if I bring it up closer, you can see that I've just folded it down and it will sit on top of this one here. So again, every other one, and I think it's easier first just to pull out all the longer ones and fold them. And once you get kind of going with this, I would recommend a softer cardstock if it's the first time you're doing it. This is a 220 GSM. This is Tonic Studio 12 by 12 card. And it's just nice and soft to be able to put all these folds in. I have done those other ones with a 300 GSM and it worked, but it did take a bit more work to actually work the card to fold um, like we need it to. And then you'll see the top one there will fold over. So right now you've got all these, it's like an optical illusion, it looks really cool. 
what you want to do then is just fold or clip each one under the one that it's sat on top of and that will hold it in place. Now if you want to tack it with some glue you can but I haven't. All I've done is added a little bit of glue where we do that one. Once you fold it they don't, they're not going to come out and we're going to burnish this in a minute. But you can see I'm just popping each one underneath the one below. Then grab your bone folder and just go along all of those folds so they're nice and flat. Okay, next you're going to grab one of these and we're going to add a little bit of glue just along kind of the bottom in the corner. So just there and there. Okay, just a little bit. And then you're going to just pop it underneath and then line it up with the end of the card. But make sure that score line in the middle of it lines up with the score line running through the middle of your design. And we're going to snip into that a little bit in a minute. So I just bring that up so you can see. And in a minute we're going to cut into there so we get the same pattern. Okay, so I'm now going to fold all this side and stick that and then I'll show you how to snip that away in a minute. Okay, so now we're going to fold the card in half. Now if any of your bits move up, see some of mine have, just push them or kind of squeeze them together so they all sit within and then just burnish them. We're going to cut the end one in a minute so don't worry too much about that one. I'm just going to pinch them together and that's where you might feel actually you want to add a little bit of glue there but I think once you burnish them into place they don't go anywhere. Okay, so now you can see we've got that lovely fold and you really get to appreciate kind of two designs really. You've got the folded half and then you get the full design when you open up the card. And with the bottom piece here what you want to do is you're going to cut along this piece here that it sits next to. So just cut along to the end there. I just bring it up, can you see? And then just follow the same kind of angle as this piece here. You see? So again, do this one. So you're going to just cut along and then I'm just going to follow the angle there. Okay, so just get rid of those bits. And again, you'll see when it's open now you get that same design running from the top to the bottom. So now that's all, all that's left to do is decorate. Now you can also burnish those other score lines out so they will run right up to your design. So all the ends of those cuts, I'm just gonna fold that over like so. And again, this one here. Now the card might feel quite flimsy. I mean, again, I am using that softer lighter weight cardstock but once you add your mats and layers it um, soon starts to strengthen the card. So now you'll see if we get this effect like so. That's if you want it, like I said you might want to decorate it this way. Entirely up to you. So I'm going to do that way. So I have this piece here. Now to decorate all of the card I have used the Card Making Magic Paper Craft Society kit number 18 and I've just used the papers that came in there, I've used the just for you or just to say sorry stamp here along with this beautiful, love this flourish here and that's what I've used and then I used the stamp cubes that come with the kit as well and I coloured it in and then the hello is from this die here, you've got the hello die, you can see all these other ones that you've got and I'll be using those in future videos. And then the papers, so I used one of these sheets here to decorate as well. So pop all that away, again I'll link everything in the description box. So this piece here is two and three quarters by five and three quarters and that is going to go in the middle. I've got the same size which is going to go on the reverse and then I have four pieces of the white card here which is one and a quarter by five and three quarters and then the pattern paper is one by five and a half and they're going to go on top and these will go 
on your two sides here and also on the back side. So I'm going to get all that stuck down and then I'll show you how to add your gems. Now these gorgeous faceted iridescent holographic whatever you want to call them pearls were from B&M and I picked them up from filming this I picked them up about a week ago from B&M so hopefully you will have them available in yours but you'll see now it just really does add some sparkle on the sides and then I'm just going to finish off where did I put them on this one here so I had a large and a small um, well it was a medium she gets small medium and a large so we do the same arrangement so we pop that one there and then that one there and then one down here like so well, those are both of the cards so like i said you can have it in the envelope like this you can have it in the envelope like this and because you put the fold in it naturally it just kind of pops out so I'm, don't, I'm not sure whether I'll, I'll put them away like this put them away <laughs> I'll pop them in the envelope these are just some shop brought these were Dovecraft ones from the Dovecraft basics you can see the color it's like a mauve color I thought it worked really well but they fit perfectly in your envelope there and I just think they've turned out beautifully so I hope you've enjoyed this double lattice gatefold card for me today i've got tons of ideas on how to use this lattice effect so this is definitely not the last of the cards i'll probably end up doing a lattice fold playlist on youtube so check that out as well if you're maybe watching this maybe in a year's time who knows there may be a lot more for you to see as well and if you've enjoyed today's video check out the videos popping up now i'll put the other lattice one there if i haven't popped it along the top there will also be some other videos that you might enjoy you want to see and again if you've enjoyed today's video please hit the subscribe button hit the notification bell and that way you'll be notified every time I upload a new video and I'll be back again very soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.